Thank you so much. I'm very honored to be here, and I don't want to revisit any of the referendum issues in a sense. It's sort of what now. And this is maybe just a minority perspective. Uh, this may be just something that I've picked up on through my own work. For the last 15 years, I've been working very much with um, movements uh, around ethnic minorities, uh, and something has arisen that I just want to air as a voice of concern. So I've titled this, Mind the Gap. Uh, I started working in Fibsborough in, um, with the Vincentian Refugee Centre, and now I'm a member, uh, that was 15 years ago, and now I'm a, a member of the Discovery Gospel Choir. So let's just put a little context that the space between ethnic minorities and white Irish, majority community, whatever uh, language you want to use, that dynamic is one that fascinates me. But the referendum highlighted a fissure, and no one more articulate to define this fissure than the Nigerian comedian Fabu D. Watch this. Hello, Daddy. Um, look, you know, I'm gay, and um, that's me, fella. And then uh, we get married. Really? Ah, you're a grand. That's me, son. I love you. You look cute together, you do. Who's going to be the bride? Who's going to be the groom? Daddy. Um, I'm gay, and um, that's my boyfriend. We're gonna get married tomorrow. What? You are gay? Hey, hey, hey. Look at this. hey man, what is in the bag? What is in the bag? Um, my son and his boyfriend. Okay. <laughs> come here, come, 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 come. Ah. Oh. The majority of my Asian and African friends voted no uh, in the referendum, and it highlighted an, uh, a whole dynamic that I simply hadn't experienced in 15 years, and it was picked up on, um, for example, in this article in the Irish Times. Um, but part of the dynamic, so for example, let's just give little, little examples. Um, this was a Zimbabwean friend, a person younger than me, who said, look, I was very hesitant about writing anything about this, but I... I'm voting no, and I'm encouraging my friends, get out and vote, and I would encourage you to vote no. She got 46 likes to that, and then the first response that came back said, from an Irish person saying, having worked with many suicidal young people over the years, um, many who were devout Catholics and Christian beliefs, I fundamentally disagree with your assessment that people should vote no. On a personal level, I'm shocked. I simply can't believe you're a smart person. I can't believe that somebody who's compassionate like you would uh, think that you can uh, take away choice is a wonderful thing, tolerance of people uh, is a wonderful thing, and that got 40 likes. Uh, so it was this sort of emergence that, oh my goodness, there are, are differences of, of thought. This was from an older, an older person. This is a post from a Nigerian friend. He's a DJ. I, I don't think he was particularly passionate about being no or yes voting um, from knowing him, but he just highlighted this one. He said, right, I'm not saying vote net yes or vote no, but I actually hope you guys that are preaching equality and all that actually know the meaning and are practice it not just in terms of same sex, but in all aspects of life, because I know you guys are racist and discriminating. To which someone else replied, well, the same could be said for people shouting about racism and inequality, then they won't vote for equal rights. It's a funny world. So this whole space suddenly emerged around differences of worldview, differences of opinion. Uh, and I'm sorry, I was looking for a good photograph of you. This is a very young, dashing Senator Norris. <laughs> but uh, this, this, I believe, was taken from a, a very... 1974 and the first interview on RTE with a gay man, is that correct? So I say that to say that Senator Norris, Miss Panty and so on have absolutely had a, such a formative effect on, on Irish thinking and on Irish social movements and so on in a way that other nationalities, other background, other worldviews have been influenced by different factors, different dynamics, and the referendum brought this to a head, this clash of worldviews. Um, this is just a little example of the complexity of the human person. We heard on the panel, we're all different. There's all multiple complexities, even just within ourselves. Just, just give a little example of a lady called Gabrielle, and she's Australian, but she's also a bit of a soccer player, and she's also a student, and she also walks her dog, and there's multiple aspects to her personality. Now, by and by, if Gabrielle meets another Australian, they can connect on 
the level of being Australian, or if they meet another dog lover, they can both talk about dogs, or if they're another student, you can talk about being a student or a KFC employee or any of the other dynamics of her identity. However, the problems arise when uh, two negatives match, when two parts of uh, one's personality, uh, well, somebody's personality matches, mixes negatively with another per person's personality. Uh, this was drawn home to me by um, a group in Fermanagh and said at the time of the Troubles, you know, the great complexity was that you would have farmers who were neighbors, who'd share each other's tractors with each other, uh, who'd do this, that, and the other with each other, lived in the same area, drove in the same roads, but one would be a member of the Orange Order and the other would be a, a sympathizer of the IRA. So 90% of, of life could be lived together, but when you pointed those points of difference together, it was very, very toxic and uh, d difficult. So one of the difficulties we have had is that referendums are innately reductionist in that they're binary, they're yes or no. You've just got two options on, on what you can say in any referendum. And a similar example uh, was the Belfast Agreement in 1998. Overwhelmingly, uh, it, it won about 73% to 27%. Uh, however, in Northern Ireland, the Catholic community voted 93% said yes and 7% said no, but the Protestant community voted 57% said yes and 43% said no. At the time, it was opposed by the DUP and there was a uh, largest opposition was within a conservative unionist and a loyalist communities. At the time, there was a certain sense, look, you're on the wrong side of history, uh, peace is marching on, nothing can, uh, can stop this, and uh, the concerns maybe were not adequately addressed at the time. The peace process were now 15 years in, and, or more, and yet we have still had the issues pertinent to those communities are still not being resolved. The Richard Haas talks um, uh, oncoming or uh, not, not being successful. Um, so the challenge we have is uh, working with the key stakeholders in our society, even when they're minorities, and referendums the danger that we can create a dynamic of insider and outsider, winner and loser, consensus and dissent. And the danger with dissent is radicalization. And uh, we've seen this with the whole context of whether you fly a flag on Belfast City Hall or not, and this virtually causing Belfast and Northern Ireland to come to a standstill. In a very sort of extreme example of it, and I only mention it because of the context of today and the Paris attacks and, and not having any proper understanding of the, the motivation or the context for that, but we do, we are in a situation of Europe where there is a radicalized young male minority, many of whom are suburban, second generation, people like Jihad John or the Lee Rigby killers, and they've been radicalized. And of course, there's nothing to justify the radicalization, nothing to justify the violence, but there is a major European question on who are the outsiders and what is the net effect of being an outsider. Now, our referendum, referendums are often after a referendum, there is some sort of reconciliation movement because yes and no often is, is an unhelpful black and white sort of categories that people need to go into. Uh, so I, I just wanted to draw inspiration from the Scottish referendum, which uh, immediately afterwards, there was a huge, massive government-sponsored and church-sponsored campaign for reconciliation. Right, we've robustly debated the issues, but now let us get back to being one Scotland. We maybe haven't had that, but maybe there's a role that can be played there. I just would be concerned about the gap and gaps that have emerged, and I think there's a very significant piece of work we need to do. Let us mind the gap. Thank you.